Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we will talk about the concept, the notion of standard deviation. How to go about calculating it? How does how does one go about calculating standard deviation if one has one has been given a set of data? Calculating standard deviation involves the de figuring out. It it involves looking at each single observations. Unlike unlike when we talk about the dispersion, yesterday we talked about it, dispersion can be, we can get, one can get a sense of dispersion, how, how spread out the data is by looking at the range, which is the, which is the two extremes, the least observation and the greatest observation, or you can talk about the range of the middle 50% of the population by looking at what is known as interquartile range, we talked about it yesterday and the day before yesterday, but today we'll talk about the third tool, which gives us a much better sense of how spread out the data is, what is known as standard deviation. And it, it involves looking at each single observation and asking ourselves how is this observation, how much does this observation deviate from the mean of the observation? From the mean of the observation. We look at the deviations, deviations from the mean. But we don't just look at the deviations from the mean, we square the quantity. The quantity is squared. This quantity is squared. Deviations from the mean, we look at each of the deviations from the mean, may squared. The question is, why do we do that? Why do we square the deviations? Why can't we simply add the deviation? And that should give us a very good idea of how we spread out the data. It's just uh, look at all the deviations from the mean and all, add them all up. For example, let's, let's, look at, let's look at three different scenarios. We can have three countries, country A, country B, and country C. And in these three countries, we'll have three people in each, each of these three countries. Country A, Town A, Town B, three, Town C, and you will have three people in each one of them. In Town A, the first person has the income of three dollars, the second person has the income of three dollars, the third person has the income of three dollars. In Town B, first person has, has the income of two dollars, the second person has the income of three dollars, third person has the income of four dollars. In Town C, the first person has the income of zero dollars, second person has the income of zero dollars, and the third person has an income of nine dollars. I may have to erase this thing because I'm, I'm making it too crowded. So we have zero, zero, and nine. As you can clearly see, in all three cases, the x bar, which is, which is which is how we represent the mean, mean is represented as x. It is read as x bar. This is your mean. As you can see, in each of these three cases, the mean is three. In each of these three cases, the mean is three. And if you were to figure out the deviation to the mean, so this is these are your x's, this is your x, and this is the this is the x minus the x bar. X represents the observation, x bar represents the mean. X minus x bar in this case of course is zero because they are all three. The deviation of the mean, deviation of the mean is zero in this case. These are the deviations, zero, 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 because they are all three. 0, 0, 0, they are all 3. What about here? In, in country B, again this is your x, this is your x minus x bar, and again since the mean is 3, 3 minus 2, or in this case 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 1, 3 minus 3 is going to be 0, and 4 minus 3 is going to be positive 1. If you simply add up the deviations from the mean, the positive deviations will cancel out the negative deviation, giving us the sum of the deviations to be zero, hence giving us the impression that all the observations are the same. When the de standard deviation is zero, when the standard deviation turns out to be big fat zero, that means they are all the same. There is no deviation from the mean. As we can clearly see, that is not the case. There is a deviation from the mean. Mean is three, this guy is only two dollars, this guy is four dollars. But the negative deviations cancel out the positive deviations. Similarly here, the, 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 the average is three, but we look at the deviations, If you look at the deviation, this is your x, here is the x minus x bar, so it's going to be 0 minus, minus 3, 0 minus 3, 0 minus 3, 9 minus 3, because it's x minus the x bar, 0 minus 3 is minus, 
my negative 3. This is negative 3, this is negative 3, and this is positive 3. Again, the sum of the deviation is 0, which is why we cannot simply add up the deviations because the negative deviations cancel out the positive deviation. The next question that comes to one's mind is, if that's the problem, if your worry is that the negative deviations will cancel out the positive deviations, why don't we just take the absolute value? Why don't we just take the absolute value of the bloody thing and that will solve the problem. It will solve the problem because if you take the absolute value, it will no longer be zero and we can clearly see that the deviation from the mean, the sum of the absolute value of the deviation from the mean is zero here, which means there is no deviation, they're all the same. Here it turns out to be two, here it turns out to be two, and here it turns out to be 12. We can clearly see they do not cancel out and we can also clearly see that this data set has more deviations because it's 0, 0, 9, they are more spread out than 2, 3, 4. Here they are tighter. Why don't we just, why don't we simply take the absolute value of the deviations? Why do we have to go through the trouble of taking the squares of the deviations from the mean? There is a reason for that as well. Because what happens is that if you take the square instead of taking the absolute value, watch what happens. Watch what happens if we take the squares. See here right now, right now it's 2 versus 12. It looks like there is a difference, but it doesn't bring out the fact that these two people have absolutely no money at all. All the money is going to third per third person, and the average income in that town is three dollars. But all the income is going to one person. Everybody else is starving. It doesn't bring out the stark difference in the spread there. It is. It does bring out, but the, it's, it's it's only six times the six times the amount. Or as you can see, the difference is much larger. Zero zero nine versus two three four. There's a huge difference in terms of the spread. Well, when we take the square of the deviation, it will bring out that much. And when we take the square of the deviation, the, the sum will still be 2 here. But here, if you take the squares of the deviations, we will get, we will get 9, 9, and 36. 9, 9, and 36. 36 plus 10 is 46. 46 plus 10 is 56. 56 minus 2 is 54. There you go, voila. Now this represents the sum of the squares of the deviations for the mean. By the way, this 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 symbol that we just drew here, let's talk about this thing. Where can we put it? This thing is read as in some textbook, not all textbook, in some textbook it is read as curly x. Curly x, which is defined as the deviation from the mean. You take your observation and you figure out how far is it from the mean. Now it doesn't matter whether you measure the deviations from mean as x minus x bar or x bar minus x, it doesn't matter because you're going to square the quantity eventually. You're going to curly x squared. It's called curly x squared. This, 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 this thing is going to be squared. And when you add them all up, when you add them all up, what we get is right here, curly x, sum of the curly x squared. And you can clearly see here, this is 54 versus 20. Now, 54 versus 2. Now we can clearly see that in this scenario, they spread out, the spread is huge. There is a great deal of disparity in town C compared to town B. And of course town A has no, no disparity at all because the standard deviation is zero. Do you understand? Let's do the process. Let me take a quick look here. Just give me one second here. I do not know how much time I have already consumed. So that's the idea here. That's why we take that's why we take the we take the sum of the squares of the deviation as opposed to simply taking the deviations themselves or simply taking the absolute value of the deviations. Do you understand? I think I'm going to call the day, call, call, it, call it a day here because if I continue with the problem it will be too long. We'll just, we'll just label it something different and in the next video we'll actually solve the problem. The problem that we're going to solve is in the next video the problem that we're going to solve is right here 4.2.8. But I want you to make, I want you to understand why is it that we go through the trouble of squaring the deviations why? We take the deviations from the mean of each of the observations. We take each observation and ask ourselves how much does it deviate from the mean. But then we go through the trouble of squaring it. Why is it? Why, could, why couldn't we just simply add up the deviations? Well, if we simply add up the deviations, the positives and negatives can kill each other. And hence, there's a potential that it might give us the impression that there is no deviation or there is very little deviation, whereas in fact there might be huge deviations. Do you understand? Because if, if the mean is 5, uh, if the mean is, let's say, if the mean is, if mean is 15, and one guy scored 5 and one guy scored 25, well, the negative 10 and positive 10 will cancel each other out. 
and hence giving us the impression there is no deviation just like here which is why we do not simply add up the deviations next question was why don't we simply take the absolute value of it but if you take the absolute value you're not assigning it greater here we, by squaring it we're assigning this observation a much greater weight that's what it is it, we're giving it a much more import much greater importance here we're giving it more weights because it has a weight of 36 this has a weight of 9 this has a weight of 9 it gives us a much greater much better picture that this here this spread is far greater than here 2 versus 54 we'll pick up from here tomorrow okay bye now